The Ark of the Covenant, built by Moses to hold the stone tablets of the Ten Commandments at the command of God himself. In Jerusalem, it was the literal dwelling of the Most High, secreted in the darkness of the Holy of Holies for centuries. Then it disappeared. No one knows exactly where or when, but for more than 2,000 years, the whereabouts of the Ark have been shrouded in mystery, despite countless attempts to track it down. There are many theories as to the whereabouts of the Holy Relic. Some say it's buried under the Temple Mount. Others contend it was carried to Egypt before being lost to history. Wherever it may be, the Lost Ark of the Covenant has become one of the most sought after Christian relics in history. On a recent trip to Africa, I met up with explorer Bob Cornhook, founder of the Bible Archaeology Search and Exploration Institute. He's been investigating a little known theory about the Ark for over 10 years and agreed to let me tag along on another fact-finding adventure. A former crime scene investigator in Los Angeles, Bob has made a name for himself by searching for biblical relics based on the same techniques he used in law enforcement. Taking the Bible as a literal guide, he's traced the route of the Jewish exodus from Egypt, searched for Noah's Ark, and probed the mystery surrounding the true location of Mount Sinai. His Ark theory goes like this. Just before the Babylonians invaded Jerusalem in 586 BC, Levitical priests moved the Ark to Egypt to save it from being destroyed. After more than a century there, it was moved again all the way up the Nile River to Lake Tana in Ethiopia. And this is where they say that they had the ark and it rested right into where those trees are. We're going to go by it here right now. And as we go by with the boat, you're going to see where they actually say the ark sat in a tent, similar, uh, very similar to the tabernacle in the wilderness. The monks living on Tanakirkos Island haven't changed their worship or way of life for thousands of years. Even today, they dress in animal skins and live a primitive existence farming the small island. They also spend more than three hours a day in prayer. The monks showed us relics that they say arrived with the Ark. So these implements were said to be brought with the Ark from Solomon's temple. And this is the gomer that sits down. They put the blood in it, and then they would sprinkle the blood upon the Ark. According to these men, their ancestors safeguarded the Ark here for 800 years. In that time, Ethiopia became a Christian nation, and after that, the king came and retrieved the ark and took it to Aksum, where we're going next. The city of Aksum in northern Ethiopia was once the capital of the kingdom. Ancient kings built giant obelisks to mark their graves, which rival the pyramids in engineering genius. Legend has it that the ark was brought here in about 400 AD and was placed in the church of Our Lady Mary of Zion. The only man allowed to see the ark is a monk called the Guardian who's never allowed to leave the church enclosure. It's like a bunker. It's made out of uh, uh, cinder blocks. And they, they tell me that as you go in that door, that there is a corridor that goes to the left. Then a corridor makes a sharp right turn. And then another sharp right turn, coming back to where what they claim is the Ark of the Covenant, sitting in a big stone sarcophagus box with a silver ornate inlaid sleeve. So people say, why doesn't someone go in and get it? It'd be pretty hard to bring it out because they actually built the building around this object that they call the Ark of the Covenant. We arrived in Aksum on the holiest day of the Ethiopian Orthodox calendar, the Festival of Timkat. It's a day when tens of thousands of the faithful make a pilgrimage to Aksum, and a replica of the Ark is brought out of this church and paraded through the streets of the city. The people sing and dance before the procession, and the party lasts all night long. Timcat is like Easter and Christmas all wrapped into one. This is their festival of the Epiphany, their most important holiday of the year. And these women will be out here all night long, worshiping, singing songs, praying. There's no doubt that this is a special place and a special time. The next morning, these revelers continue celebrating with songs and dances that haven't changed in millennia. It's a fascinating look into Old Testament style worship that can't be found anywhere else in the world. At the end of the day, there's no way to know for certain if the Ark is here or not. But one thing is for sure, there's no doubt whatsoever in the minds of these Ethiopian Christians. Do I personally believe it? 
I don't know. I believe they either have the actual Ark of the Covenant mentioned in the Bible, or they have a replica that is so convincing that they've believed it to be the Ark of the Covenant for more than 2,000 years. Chuck Holton, CBN News, Oxum, Ethiopia.